first, we're going to begin here at the historic Launch Control Center where the final go for launch was given by NASA's flight director right here in this very room, firing room one. With him on the consoles behind me were 400 launch engineers who were all men except for one. And her name is Joanne Morgan, and she's back inside the firing room 50 years later. Joanne, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here. <laughs> you were an instrumentation and uh, measurement control engineer yes, inside this firing room. Yes, the job room. was instrumentation controller. Yeah. Correct. Uh, tell me what it's like to be back 50 years later. Well, it's wonderful to see all this technology here in this firing room. I mean, we had stacks of paper. We could have walked to the moon on the paper. <laughs> but, so, I'm, number one, I'm loving looking at the firing room. I want to wander around and see what, what the technology is. So that's exciting to see. What was it like that day when you think back and recall 50 years ago? Um, you were getting ready to undertake this historic venture and finally launch the Saturn V rocket and three men to the moon. There was palpable tension um, and the firing room quieted down once the flight crew came out. And we were luckily not working very many problems. They were, it was a nice quiet countdown in fact. After Apollo 8, 9, and 10, it was just a delight to have the Apollo 11 countdown. So that part went well, and there was a little hydrogen leak that was being repaired and worked, and then the techs had to get out of the pad. But um, it was the end of a five-year period of intense, intense work. Mm. And you're not relaxed because engines have to fire and they have to cut off and then the next stage engines have to fire and cut off and then a third stage has got to fire after orbiting and put translunar injection. And so for folks here in the firing room, while some of the jobs were going to end and they could go home, because Houston was in control from then on with mission control, but um, those of us up in this section knew till we got good engine firing and cut off it could ricochet in our lap, and that was important because we were doing four launches that year. Uh -huh. So we had to get ready for more launches after this. So it was a, a lot of intensity and, and great hope, great hope. And it was certainly historic. We have um, some video and, and some pictures of you in the uh, firing room here 50 years ago uh, when you were sitting there at your console. In fact, you can see yourself spot shadowed there uh, as the team prepared to launch. Um, you were the only woman. Um, what was that like? Well, I mean, I was just me doing my job. And I was very thrilled to be there. Um, by that time, I had worked with men that were here in the firing room on all the propellant loadings for eight, nine, and 10. I hadn't sat at that console during liftoff. So Apollo 11 was my first opportunity to be there actually at liftoff. So it was doubly exciting for me. Many of the, the men in the room had already gone through the liftoff phase. So wow. that was a special thing for me. And I've, I've really, after that launch, I felt totally accepted as a member of the launch team. I was going to say that that was the moment, Apollo 11, 11 where Apollo you actually 11. felt part of the team prior to that, though? Well, I felt part of the team, but I didn't get to experience liftoff in here with Dr. Debus and Von Braun and with all of the test conductors that I worked with on a daily basis. But that they thought it was OK for me to be here for launch. And I understand now, uh, I've told, been told by people that Dr. Debus approved it and said, yes, Joanne's part of the team. She should be in here with us. So <laughs> I was thrilled about that. Right. <laughs> there must have been challenges along the way that you faced uh, in, in your rise to this very unique position back then. Uh, can you talk about some of those? Well, some men just resist change, and a woman coming into their workplace was a change. And so, yeah, little little things happen that are uncomfortable, but you it's like, like mosquitoes in Florida. You swat them and you're done with it, and you keep <laughs> on, you know. I just had a passion for doing this. I wanted to be a part of it, and I thought the new knowledge we're going to get is so profound, it's worth my life to work on it. Wow. And <laughs> now, Artemis, uh, the next mission to put the first woman on the moon and the next man returning 
to the moon. Um, what are your thoughts on that program? Oh, I think it's fabulous. I just love the idea of a woman walking on the moon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, they'll see things differently. <laughs> Say, uh-oh, we need a dustpin up here. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, but you're, I, I just think this is a great idea, and I am so excited about a woman launch director here 50 years after. I had to kind of work my way in over a 10-year period uh, to be an instrumentation controller. I'm excited uh, that there's going to be a woman launch director guiding a team through to launch. And we're going to talk to her in just a, a little bit. Um, certainly a special moment to be here. Are you ready to go out there and uh, meet uh, the new launch team for absolutely, SLS? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. All right. Joanne Morgan, thank you so much for sharing this moment with us and sharing your experiences for Apollo 11. Well, it's great to be here. All right.